Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video in the Radar Omega series. Today we will be talking about how to identify tornadoes using the velocity and correlation coefficient products in Radar Omega. These concepts will also apply to other radar viewing tools like Radar Scope and GR Analyst. So if you've been curious about how the NWS and other meteorologists can tell if there is a tornado possible or confirmed, keep watching. We will also be covering a feature unique to Radar Omega, drawing storm tracks. I'll be using the desktop version, but these principles also apply on iOS and Android. The event that we're going to be taking a look at today is tornado outbreak on November the 4th, 2022. There were quite a few tornadoes, uh, nine total for the Shreveport uh, CWA or County Warning Area, and we are going to look at essentially two of them, but both of these were from the same storm. But we're going to look at these two tornadoes in a little bit more detail so we can identify when they occurred. We're going to look at the radar. So let's go ahead and switch over to that. All right, so we got Radar Omega up here. And I have the velocity up already. Let's take a look at the reflectivity. So we got a couple of storms here, and we got this big line of storms back here. We don't care about all this nonsense back here. So we're just going to ignore that. The storms that we are particularly interested in are these ones that are a little bit more isolated, like these and maybe these. So let's take a look. So we're looking at the New Boston tornado. So these storms kind of go like this, only the opposite direction. So they're going this way. Let's clear that. Let's watch. This cell right here is one that we're going to watch. And let's take a look and see if we've got any others we can identify. That one goes right through there. Let's take a look at it over time. Let's see if we can get this to go back. So it starts way back here southwest of Tyler and goes that way. Let's go ahead and move it forward. You see it starts to develop. It doesn't look very good. But right here, right in this area, it's doing something a little interesting, especially right here. So let's take a look at it on velocity and see what we've got going for us. So we're going to go down to high res velocity and we're going to pick that one and bam right there if you look right here that's our storm and let's watch as it goes basically that direction my line drawing is not very good yeah my line drawing is terrible but let's zoom in here now the purpose of the reason i decided to do this video was I had a commenter ask a question about broad and tight rotation. So right here, this is an example of kind of in between broad and tight rotation. There's not really anything tight there, but you can see this little area in the middle of that. Let's go forward a little bit more and now we're starting to see it go from broad to tight. Broad, broad, tight right here. Right through here and then right here you can really see it crank up. So that's the difference between broad and tight rotation is you'll have this surrounding red color and these orange and green colors and then you have this little feature right here that's your tornado, and this is the mesocyclone that surrounds it. So let's get rid of this here, and let's watch this as it goes forward a little bit. See, that's where I would say the tornado occurred, and then probably continued on, and then dissipated. And then maybe it got stronger again. I mean... This thing must have gone through multiple cycles. You can see it here again. This looks like a much broader rotation than previously, and it's kind of weak right in this area. But we're we're looking at it's this, and it's really it's a really big area. 
Let's keep going. Now we know that this goes on to be the new Boston tornado, which ended up being an EF3. And you can see these all these little tiny indications right here. And this is the big reason why I don't like to use smoothing. All of these little details like this, this, all this goes away. And then you can't identify minor little features inside of a, a storm. You also remember that this is looking really far up in the atmosphere. So if we had a radar in Texarkana, this would be a lot more evident that this is a tornado. But this is what we've got this far out here. We have to use the uh, Shreveport radar, which is way down here. So we're pretty far from the radar site. But you can see that there's some rotation. But we need a little bit more information. And the information that we're going to need is the correlation coefficient. So let's go and take a look at that. And we will go back in time and see what it looked like with the correlation coefficient. It'll give us a little bit better idea of what was happening. Let's take a look near Mount Pleasant here, just to the southeast of Mount Pleasant. And right there, in this little area, is an area of different colors, blues, yellows, and then you have all this red. That's how you kind of know that there might be something there. This is what we would call a debris signature. Uh, and usually with a radar, a tornado warning, you'll see radar confirmed, especially at night whenever you can't see them. So that's, that's basically your debris right there. And what the correlation coefficient essentially is, is it detects the shape and size of objects. And when the shape and size of the objects are generally the same, like raindrops, for example, this is kind of what you'll get. This could potentially be hail that may, may or may not be making it all the way to the ground. Because hail has different shapes and sizes, so that might be hail. I don't know for sure, but it could be. But this, this is definitely not hail or rain, because this has a really big discrepancy between the rest of these colors. So that's how we know that there's probably some debris being lofted up into the ap atmosphere where the radar is picking it up. And notice it continues on and then it spreads out. It's really blue right here. So it must have hit something pretty significant right about here. So you can pretty much say that this tornado was ongoing all the way from right here by Texas Highway 11, all the way probably to the other side of Naples. Let's go take a look at the track and see. And here we go. Now this is a little bit, this shows it as being maybe a little bit longer, but it shows it starting right here by Kaysen. And I can't tell if there's, yeah, Kaysen. Kind of an interesting name for a town. And it crosses, goes all the way up here to Naples. Right here at Texas, or I think that's Texas 77. So if we go back here, here's Texas 77. And if you look at the debris signature, boom, right there it goes right, right after it crosses. So that's where they stopped finding debris, and that's where they ended up drawing the path. So that's probably where they got the path from, is from this correlation coefficient. So there you go. That's our first tornado, and the storm continues on. And this right here, let me get the pencil. This right here is probably debris being strewn about and falling out of the sky at this point. Um, and then we'll keep it going. Now we have a new tornado. Notice it's in a different location. The other one was here. And then behind it, right here, so the mesocyclone reorganized itself, and now we have what looks like a new tornado right here. And we'll continue that on. i got to click back to the mouse. 
And this one's a little bit bigger. So it's a little bit bigger of a debris field. So there might have been a lot more trees or a lot more something there. Crosses over US 82. And then the debris field kind of disperses whenever it crosses the Red River there. So let's take a look at our track and see. So it looks like our track goes from right at the crossroads of Texas 990 and US 67. So here is, where's 990? Well, here's 67. So I'm going to guess it's right here. And that is, maybe it's back here. Well, regardless, that's the other tornado. So that's where I would say. From here, just northeast of Pittsburgh, crossing over to Naples. That was the one before. That's why I'm getting confused. Okay. Here's your new one. I don't see the highways here. I guess if I zoom in, maybe. So let's go ahead and look at it. It crosses. And that's pretty much where they have it end. So that's your second tornado. And that's how you identify it using correlation coefficient and velocity. Let's talk about drawing storm tracks. Drawing storm tracks is pretty straightforward. So let's pick up our storm again. There it is. So we know that it goes kind of towards Naples here. From Hawkins to Naples. So you're going to want to pick on the tool icon down here. Let me circle it. This right here. You're going to click on it. And you're going to click Draw Storm Track. There we go. So I don't know how fast this storm was moving, but we're going to assume it's moving at 45 because that's what I remember. And that's it. It gives you your uh, your impact times, tells you where it might be, and let's see how close I drew this. Did I do a good job? Hey, look, I actually drew something correct this time. So that's how you draw your storm track. And each of these dots, you can click on them, and it'll tell you how long. 50 minutes, 40 minutes, 35 minutes. So it goes in five minute increments. And there you go. That's how you draw storm tracks, and that's how you look at correlation coefficient and velocity and identify a tornado. If you guys have any questions, let me know, and I will do my best to answer them. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.